Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your first guest. It's Blake Foster. What's going on, guys? Boo you. Here's that man on stage. Hello, I'm Amy Jo Johnson. Nice south of them. Lesa? You're so high. Thank you. I've trimmed down significantly since I was a Power Ranger and started waxing my upper lip. I'm just bleaching it, clearly. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> We're doing a panel just to amuse Shrier right now. So, what's your name, son? Any polls in the audience today? Oh, we got a poll over there! Hey, I'm shocked and a poll! <laughs> oh! I'm a shock. Oh wait, here's a Tracy. Tracy Lacruz. Good morning, good morning everybody, hello. Let me help you with your helmets. Where are yours? <sighs> Lost that helmet again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Cardenas. What's up, Liverpool? Move over. Yes, sir. Right out loud, you took my dignity, now you're taking my chair. Sorry about that, sorry. Uh, isn't it nice that we can all get together like this over breakfast? We're like, so. Time you have to be in school today. You do your homework? Don't lie to me! Don't lie to me! Hi! Oh, the other one. Hey, Polly, Hello. Polly. Hello. Hello! So apparently we're just gonna sit here like fish in an aquarium and you guys can just look at us be idiots, which is what we usually do. All right, so what do you want to talk about? You brought us all the way. If, if what do you want to talk about? If anyone has questions, you can raise your hand. And then we'll have Put somebody... Put your hand play. down, sir! <laughs> we have somebody that will bring a mic to you. Hello. I just, I explained before you guys got oh, here. Oh, there you so are! I, Hi, Alex! Hello, She's lovely! so cute! I love it! Oh, thank you! I'm going to call my baby Tracy if it's a girl. Thank you. Love it even more. Um, what we're going to do, because there aren't enough microphones, we're going to just go straight to asking questions for you guys, yep. if that's okay. To yep. Zordon Era panel, everybody. Give it up for your Power Rangers! Thank you. And Bucket's Girl! So do we have any questions? This guy does right here. Good God, you will never put that hand down. What's up, sir? What do you want? What are you doing? What is it? It's more place. You'll get up for more. We got the Power Rangers behind us. You don't yeah. have to be running around. We'll bring the mic. Oh, that's good exercise. Right. Hello. Oh, right, go oh my God, it's my nightmares right behind us. Good God. <laughs> I believe that's your paycheck. <laughs> I haven't looked that fit in a while, so good job, buddy. <laughs> you look fit. You're a size. You're a beautiful size and shape. Round. Round. Round, round is the shape. <laughs> I mean, if Steve Cardenas is not the sexiest human being I've ever met, but also the most self-deprecating. You know what I mean? With a few lines of wisdom, I think we've all added. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. What's your question? Uh, um, hi, guys. Because... Good morning. Because I'm a big fan, I've seen a lot of footage of different panels that you've had around the world. Yep. So, oh, oh. so a lot of the uh, a lot of the questions that I had about your careers in the show. Uh -huh. Oh my! I don't know if any of you guys saw that, but it cut out right when he got to the question. It's like you know, I've been formulating this question for a very long time, and here it comes. Listen, the secret, the secret to life is it. That's a lot of feedback. Come on, All right, All right, go ahead. Question. No. I know that um, Austin has said it was Walter that introduced him to kind of the convention world. So I was wondering, what were your um, introductions and first impressions of? This crazy world we call conventions. Right. That's a good question. That is a good question. That's the first time we ever got that question. Now, I would say probably the first time that we all did a convention was when we did the first Power Morphicon. Remember yeah. that? Back yeah. in 2007, yeah. we got invited to this hotel downtown in Los Angeles, and they said, "Will you come and meet some fans and sign pictures for them and stuff?" And uh, that was our first time. Yeah, there was a girl named Maureen Dawson, and although her mother didn't know it at the time, she was about to spend eighty thousand dollars of their savings. She was she was a law student. 
So it's not like a law student is the kind of person that has the time and money to actually start and run a convention of this size. Yeah, but she did it. But that, that was my first experience because, you know, for, for 10 years or so after I left Power Rangers, I had nothing to do with Power Rangers at all. And when I went to this convention, we walked in and there was like 800 fans just waiting in the lobby and they all started clapping as soon as I walked through the door. Wow, this is cool. Yeah, People I mean, still like it. I was like, it was odd because we spent the next 10 years trying to get away from it, you know, trying to like get over the war, like a soldier getting over the war. But I'm not, oh, it's okay. It's over. The war is over, Paulie. Oh my God, it's Hyam Sabah he's coming in to take your pay. Okay. <laughs> Imagine, Mark, if you will, you left high school, and one day you walk in, and everyone from high school is there, dressed like all of your other friends. You know, like five guys in high school, and then there's like 400 people dressed like those guys. It's a nightmare, man. A nightmare. You're like, here, Mark, sign your yearbook. You're like, oh, God, that's my yearbook. And then it's like Groundhog Day. It happens over and over. It was very odd. And then, like, for some of us, we had lost track of each other. So it's the first yeah, we haven't seen each other in like 10 years. Yeah, yeah. some of us. Yeah. yeah, so we like got to meet each other. See, what are you doing? What? That's all I got to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Good. Anybody else have a question? I was just wondering, anybody else on, on this side, like oh, uh, yeah, Blake, sure. Tracy, uh, you guys in the conventions, is it the same? Was it... Well, I think Selwyn needs to introduce himself, so... Hello, everybody. I'm Selwyn Ward, yeah. first black leader of the Power Rangers. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, that first Morphicon, that was my first experience also. I actually thought it was a little strange at first. It, it took me a little while to kind of get used to... It kind of feels a little bit sometimes like you're kind of in a zoo, but you're actually the person in the exhibit. People kind of walk by... Do not feed you. the animals. Exactly, but... Um, but the more I'm doing, you know, the more I get to meet more fans and I hear stories that are very moving. And um, it's actually a really great experience. And as they say, it's a good time for us to catch up also. Any more questions? I have to keep. James is going to kill me. And what, uh, Mike, is it? If we step above these green lights, so you have to come to me. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Don't, don't be shy. Don't everybody jump up at first. You're not going to send me into spontaneous labor, don't worry. Oh, over here, over here. Can I? Oh, I'm running! What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened when you were filming? Well, it's never good when your pants fall down and you couldn't wear underwear <laughs> because they were busy. The undergarments were busy doing Translation, something. it's not good to wear trousers if you don't have pants underneath. Correct. Underpants. Knickers. Knickers. Oh. I love American basketball. You know, the Knickers. <laughs> Honestly, the, the, my most embarrassing moments on stage uh, at filming Power Rangers have been wardrobe malfunctions. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Lots of nip slips. Yep. Like, you couldn't work on Power Rangers if you weren't comfortable with body fluids and nudity. Woo! Uh, there's a funny story, though. Like, we used to film in this lake, uh, Castaic Lake is where we'd film. If you ever saw, if you see us by the water, we were always at this lake in California. And uh, one time, I remember Jason Frank, Jason David Frank had to uh, jump in the water, like fully, like with all of his clothes on. So before they yelled action, I just see him standing like this. And all of a sudden, you just see this big puddle <laughs> right there. And he, he ran and jumped in the water, so he pissed himself first and then jumped in the water. <laughs> I like how he said, I remember the one time Jason Frank went in the water. Like, if someone were to say, hey, Paulie, Narvi, remember the time you went in the water? We'd be like, which time? We were in that water so much, we may as well have been amphibians. We started to develop gills. Remember that? Remember that? Gills. Those gills are so 90s. Any more embarrassing stories? I, I don't have very many embarrassing stories, but... There was one time when I hit a trampoline and I wasn't wearing those trousers while he's talking about. Hit the trampoline, pants hit the ground, and everybody got to saw a little Justin's little Justin. How old were you then? Like 12. <laughs> because little if Justin. there's one thing 12 year olds are comfortable with, it's their bodies. <laughs> All right, not most embarrassing, but most awkward. We were shooting in the. Uh... <laughs> Command center? The what? 
Oh, the lunch area. You talking about the juice bar? Yeah. Yeah. The juice bar, but. Youth Center. Yeah. Youth Center. Lots of Youth Indians. So Native because American it's tribe. Uh, because it's, it's, they're a bunch of props there. It, it, it's made to look like the Juice Bar or Youth Center or whatever, but everything breaks down. Nothing is as, as, as it seems. So with uh, Ashley being known as the acrylic nails, uh, Cassie once referred to Ashley, um, my nail during the scene while we were rolling, got caught in between where the bar breaks down. So when I turned around really quick, my nail ripped off uh, with that, with that turn. And I was still, they were still rolling. So I still had to be in character knowing that I had a nail that was hanging off of my finger. So after they rolled cut, I took a look and I was missing a whole fingernail, not just the acrylic, but the nail itself. So during that time, so uh, as we were shooting for continuity purposes, so Ashley didn't have a nail on one time and then the nail off, we had to keep it with a Band-Aid. So that was very difficult shooting with a, a nail hanging off my finger, but you know what? We prevailed and we did it. Oh so there we go. Yeah. Woo! Overcoming adversity. Us. Uh, we've got one more question over here. I'm going to try and not set the microphone. Oh, yeah, I've got a question. Um, this goes for all of, all the Rangers. Uh, basically, the fight scenes, when you're doing the fight scenes, where the suits, sorry, of Falcon School. Um, still a big fan of you guys as well. I grew up watching you guys, so I'm still a fan. Well, we watched you too. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you're doing the fight scenes, um, where the weapons sort of hit the suits and the sparks flew out, was that from the weapons themselves? Or did you have um, pyrotechnics in the suits themselves? Yeah, it was pyrotechnics. Most of the time, that was the stunt guys that did all of that. Well, was that using the Japanese footage though? Well, a lot of times it was just sim simply Japanese footage that they would use, but if they had to recreate that in second unit, it was always the stunt guys that did that stuff. You're not answering the question, Stephen. What is the question, the exactly? question was, did the sparks come from the guns or from the suits? And since you excluded me from the question, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and answer this for you. Do it, do it. It's yeah, from the suits, bro. From the suits. From the suits. Yeah. yeah. There's Excellent. a 9-volt battery connected down the leg of the suit. Off-camera is a very fast Japanese person. And as actor B strikes actor A, they make the connection on the 9th volt. And or, pop. Power Rangers bleed sparks. They bleed sparks. Nose bleeds are terrible. And as oh we God, know, oh superheroes never look back. I'm just collecting mics. We had a huge pyrotechnic scene. Who remembers Chase into Space as we were going into In Space? Wait, can I just for a sec? <laughs> I have all the mics. Hey. Look at that. It's a round school. Hey. What about Chase into Space? <laughs> That was amazing because as we were uh, coming from Turbo, going into space, we were in a critter and they had all these big pyrotechnic explosions right behind us and we were running and as you guys know, superheroes never look back, but we sure felt it on our back. That was <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Uh, sorry guys, one more question. Uh, did you ever think when you are doing the first season of Power Rangers, uh, Ghost of Vulcan Skull, um, that, yeah, you guys, um, <laughs> Did you ever think that it'd be as big as what it was? And did you ever think it would affect so many people in their lives um, as child, you know, childhood superheroes and um, the actors that were acting in the movie, like different series and some getting a bit more multi so? I'll answer the first part of the question. If you were going to ask if we thought there was going to be longevity behind this thing, the exhibit is right behind us, Exhibit A. If someone, if you were to walk in, they're like, That's okay, so I got a gig for you and this is gonna be, this is gonna change your life, look at that. I'd be like, what are you kidding me? I'm gonna be out of work in six months. So let's start with that one. I mean, yeah, it's, it is pretty incredible I, that it's lasted the way that it's lasted because I, I, I couldn't fathom it. I mean, I, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up, you know, G.I. Joe, He-Man, I loved all that stuff. I'm not watching it now, these days, you know what I mean? But yeah. people still watch Power Rangers. To me, that's amazing. I watch He-Man. What's the matter with He-Man? Nothing's wrong with He-Man. Skeletor is awesome. Yes, of course. He that He's just misunderstood. He just needs Skeletor a friend. Skeletor is Skull's dad, by the way. Too. <laughs> 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 
We have time for one more question, and there's somebody who's just put their hand up. Sorry, guys, it's um. Yeah, I was just wondering why you were chosen for the roles. Had you done martial arts training, or what was the reason? I'm a why? phenomenal martial artist. I'm amazing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Back then I could, 25 years ago, but not anymore. You know, and so when somebody wants to make a television show, they put out a casting breakdown, right? So for every character, they put, write a piece of paper that says what that character is in their minds, the type of person, the look, the height, ethnicity, skills, and then they that goes out over the wire, which is kind of like a teletype system um, from the 60s. And every agent has one of those machines in the office, and that teletype comes over, and they go, oh, I have someone that matches that here at this agency. And then they give you a call, and they set appointments, and you get to go audition. So it's kind of like a murder. It's a combination of motive and opportunity. Yeah, I, I was a martial artist before anything, even before I started acting. So. Um, that's how I actually got the role of Power Rangers. I didn't even audition. They didn't, there was no audition process for my character. I think that they saw me on set one day throwing some kicks and doing some backflips and stuff. And then the director of the, the independent film I was doing, he was like, hey, do you want to be a Power Ranger? And I totally thought he was kidding because I grew up on Mighty Morphin. I, I literally got off the school bus to go home and watch the show. So I thought he was kidding. And then the next day he had Austin St. John and Amy Jill come to set. And then I knew it was real. And next thing I knew, I was in a table reading for Power Rangers. Okay, yeah. Um, actually, uh, when, I, when I went on the show, I had very minimal martial arts experience, actually. Uh, but I loved martial arts. I loved Bruce Lee. I grew up with old school kung fu movies, so I knew all the moves. So I kind of faked my way in a little bit. But once I got the role, I actually invested a lot of time into training, uh, where I eventually got my black belt in Hapkido. So, so that was kind of my, my, my path. But, Going into the audition, they did want some, they, they wanted to see, you know, if you could move. You know, if you could move and if you had some athleticism. You just needed to stand there and look pretty. He does that very well. Um, as for myself, I was, in, I was studying performing arts in college, so my background, my major was dance. That was what I had as far as background. Then once I got on the show, they had the Japanese guys, the, the, team we went through hell week and after that I moved in ways that I never knew that I could and I had muscles that I never knew I had so there you go a way to get fit is to become a power ranger by the sounds fit ladies and gentlemen I'm so sorry that's all the time that we've got for the questions I do have something to tell no, wait you guys. A minute. No, we have a question for you when does your belly explode and a clone of a human come out Dude. Congratulations. And it has been kicking while you guys have been on there, so this little one could be a Power Ranger. You never know, you but go. I have something to tell you all. What is it? What are the names? Oh. My friends Jeff and Kim are currently with just David Frank in Dublin. Oh, they're in Dublin? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Is there anything you would want to say to him? Keep it polite and <laughs> PG. Oh. <laughs> That was a peace symbol. That he yeah, was no, hey, about. peace off. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, your loss. This is the fun. This is where it's at right here. You got one. There's many of us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got another family. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your Power Rangers, Sword and Aaron Thank you.